it took me 20 years in America to get rid of my indoctrinated mind. I did not come here to run for office. I did not come here to get involved with politics. I just wanted to come here for freedom, have a better life. Just everybody leave me alone, right? I learned English, I got my degree, and I met my husband first night, we dated, and we got married, we raised three wonderful children. I worked for corporations, I got laid off, and then I started my own business. So 20 years, I was busy just living like regular, typical immigrant who came here with nothing, who had to start over at the age of most 24. So I wasn't political, I even did not understand politics. But when I woke up, 2008, I noticed some things like, uh, there's something going on in America I really don't like. How come uh, governments got really bigger, more intrusive, and, uh, and also they're using some terms, like uh, uh, communist terms. And especially under, you know, when also Obama become president, and uh, his rhetoric is, we got to fundamentally transform America to, to what country? I came here for America, but they want to transform it. And I noticed socialist policies, and uh, like today, everybody is talking about equity, equity. How can you have equity, which is equal outcome, which I heard in China before, without the government use a force to redistribute wealth? How do they do that? Why is everybody from corporations to universities and our you know, high schools and, and, uh, and our federal agencies, even include our military, everybody is uh, proudly uses this word, equity or DEI, mm -hmm. but the equity is in the middle. Mm -hmm. I, I have been educated students as a, you know, victim of Communist Memorial Foundation speaker for five years, I noticed our educational system have not really taught our kids history. And the horror of communism, evil of socialism, and uh, our kids don't know. Maybe that's why they want equity, and they want the socialist policy, they want the free college, and free healthcare, and free childcare, and everything free because they're entitled to. It's a human right. I, I, I say, well, what's going on in this country? What are the learning classrooms? And our teachers even don't know, life teachers even don't know about what Mao did to Chinese people. How many people died under com communism in China? They have no idea. They know a lot more about Nazis, and, you know, but not much about China. And last two years, I just got even more and more terrified. I see this is the rise of authoritarianism. We have a politician want to be our tyrant. They want to shut you down. They want to force your business close in the name of pandemic. And uh, then mandate, mandate the vaccine, mask, and if you don't comply, you can lose your job career. Your business is not essential. You get a fine if you want to cut people's hair and our schools were shutting down, churches were shut down. I thought I come here for constitutional rights of every citizen, how come they're doing this? And then I saw top-down statues, changing names of buildings and schools, and uh, burning, looting. BLM founder said, we are trained Marxist. I say people chanting in Chicago last year, the real solution is a communist revolution. You see Antifa marching with all the Soviet Union flags and they carry mouse poster, Karl Marx, big, big poster. I really feel like uh, I'm relieving another cultural revolution. And the critical race theory demonized so many people in this country by what? By being born white, by like something you cannot control, association. And uh, America is supposed to be systemic racist country, like what the Chinese government will tell me, will tell their people. It's like, but, uh, but actually it's going on all over the country right now. 
teachers unions want to teach critical race theory in all public school districts. So identity politics, five red classes under Mao and five red, and now it's a different oppressors versus oppressed. But to me, I have heard before, and the people might not know, I see the writings on the wall, I, I see this trend, we are using identity politics to divide citizens and get our citizens to fight each other instead of united with each other to solve our country's problems. And I say families don't talk to each other. During the shutdowns, they even report their neighbors for having parties in their homes because they violate the restrictions. It's, I, I, I thought I was having PTSD. I will literally wake up in the middle of light. That's why I started to dig into my childhood memories of Mao's Cultural Revolution. What is going on? How come this is like a, the Cultural Revolution all over again? Well, so, so you know, people will say, will say, well, you know, during the Cultural Revolution, tens of millions of people died, were killed, died of starvation, and so forth. That's not happening here. That's not the Cultural Revolution. But the destroy you full old, well, yeah, not yet. They, before, culture, before, before communists take full control of our country, not yet. That's why we've got to hold on to our Second Amendment. <laughs> and also, we need to exercise our free speech right now. We need not to be silenced and afraid to lose our jobs, careers, business, because if you don't push back, who is there? Who is there to defend our liberty, our free speech, and to protect our children, and they want to unite the country, don't want the socialists like people or even the tyrants like people to actually destroy America. You see the free world. What they did during COVID, to me, is mind boggling. Do we still have a free world? Why are Western democratic countries taking communist parties' tactics and the shutdown methods from their playbooks? They trust their numbers, their official numbers, but in our country, they are canceling people because they're not politically correct on social media. And you can say something, do something 20 years ago, they want to cancel you today. That's exactly what happened under Mao's Cultural Revolution. Yeah, they can find something you wrote, something you said many years ago, and then demonize you as oppressor, black class, you lose your job. You go to camps, you go to struggle sessions. Do you, have you seen the struggle session in America today? It's called the Less Whiteness Training. I have a friend in New Hampshire just got fired because he's a white male in a school, even private school. He refused to go to training, supposed to say, examine himself. You know, I'm a, I'm a white. Maybe, maybe I'm a, I have a um, hidden bias. I'm a hidden racist. He's supposed to be like a, to go with the flow, right? He said, no, I have nothing to apologize. I born this way. And uh, everyone is born equal in our, you know, um, country, according to the Declaration of Independence. We should not judge people by the skin color and by the race. But that's what they want to do all day. So what is the difference? Chinese were divided by classes, by political opinions, and by the economic status here well, and, it's by and, skin color, by race, and and by their history. Yeah, right? by their history. Yes. So how could the people be demonized? You know, by something. Especially if you're born white, you cannot control that. You're born into your white families by association, you cannot control that. By what you say, what you did long time ago, history. When you were a child, when you were a teenager, when you were a young man, you know. It's like. This is not right. Everybody deserves a second chance.